that was a very good introduction. Um, I believe I did not deserve a lot of praise because I have a lot of way to go. There are a lot of people who are doing so much for the society. And I, I just wish, I just hope when I, when I'm leaving this world, I actually do something good um, in terms of anything for the society. So that's, that's what my vision is. And I hope you guys pray for that. So let's begin with the first question. Yeah. It's visible. So we have the first question from Humaira Khan. She is 29 years old. And her mm -hmm. question is, I had a C-section and I have put on a lot of weight. What is the best and fastest way to reclaim my body again? Okay, so uh, Humaira, uh, the thing is C-sections, we, we have a lot of research for C-section uh, deliveries. Most of them are done on mice, which is the safest way to do it. So it says that oh, the weight gain is inimitable for C-section, but it, it does not mean that you cannot lose it again. It takes some time. C-sections are supposed, the women with C-sections are, you know, it, it usually happens that they gain a particular amount of weight, but they gradually and slowly reduce it. But what you have to do is, which is very important, is that if you can breastfeed the baby, you should breastfeed the baby. Breastfeeding generally, even if it's not for the C-section, it really helps women lose weight. So lose weight, and it's also very good for the baby. We know that feeding first has been the notion since the beginning. So you should try and breastfeed. It will help you lose the excess weight. Meanwhile, you should also um, drink water um, according to your body weight. You should hydrate yourself. During breastfeed, it, it is important to drink a lot of water. So you should include that plain water, not the juices, plain water in your diet. Avoid the juices for now um, because the juices has a little bit of more calories than um, other beverages. Juices, cold drinks, you should avoid them. Plain water. And the third thing you can, you can do it is breastfeeding, avoid juices, drink water. Third thing, include fiber. Um, fiber um, has been really good in uh, showing weight loss results. And it, it could simply be as simple as isbogol. Uh, include um, isbogol in your diet. Uh, you, can, you can have it two times in a day in the morning. Uh, have, have two tablespoons of isbogol um, with milk. Maybe you can, if you're if you're used to have drinking milk with yogurt, it's really good if you add it with yogurt and eat it. So um, in the night time before bed, you should also take esporol. Uh, so two times a day esporol. Uh, so it would kind of add uh, and up your fiber intake. Meanwhile, what you should do is that avoid um, the whites all whites, the bakery products, the refined carbs, the chips, whatever is processed and refined, you kind of need to avoid that for the particular moment. I know we crave uh, things and craving is very much common during pregnancy and post-pregnancy as well. But uh, what you need to know is that if you, you, you get these things in your diet, the processed food is not going to help you reduce your weight. It is just going to add to your calories, which we at the moment do not want. So do not take processed food at least for two months uh, during your weight loss and then gradually take it whenever you're craving for it. Um, you can also have dark chocolate. It's really good. Um, just avoid the white chocolate and um, aim for at least 70% uh, cacao content in the chocolate. If it's more than 70%, it's really good. It would provide you with the antioxidants. If you can manage, please, um, instead of the juices, like I said, take raw fruits and vegetables. It's really good for your um, recovery from the C-section as well. It has a lot of vitamins and minerals that, that, that is going to help you reduce weight and also add a really good amount of fiber content in your diet. And uh, like in the daily routine, what you can do is uh, mix uh, three uh, kind of flours or atta, what we say. Uh, you can have makaika atta, chakki or wheat, maize, maize flour, uh, wheat flour, you can add them, mix them and um, make a chapati of that if you're used to of having chapati. You can um, kind of add both of these flours and 
uh, have it in your diet, like the roti. And for chawal, I, I never say that uh, completely, uh, you know, avoid chawal in your diet. Chawal has a lot of uh, good things as well. So if you can manage, have brown chawal. If you have white chawal or white rice, I'm talking about rice right now. We call it chawal in Urdu for who doesn't know. So for rice, you can have rice, but aim for one bowl of rice at a time. That is one serving size of rice. So take a bowl or take a teacup and add the chawal in that. And for one particular, for in the one sitting, you can have that particular amount of chawal or rice. Okay, not more than that. If if you can manage, do not go for um, high workout sessions, gym. It's not recommended after a C-section, but what you can do right now is get used to of walking. Um, don't start with brisk walk, walk slowly for 20 minutes and then uh, increase it 30 and 40 and uh, at least aim for a 60 to 65 minutes of walk in a normal pace. This would really help you burn the extra calories that you're getting from food. The last thing that I would want you to do is um, kind of sleep well. For mothers, it, it is impossible for sleep to sleep well. The baby gets them up every night and it's, it's like a dream for a mother to get a good sleep. But if you can, if you have a family support, at least for five to six hours, you should, you should get a good sleep. So if you do all of these things, I'm sure you're going to reduce your weight gradually. And in, in, even in two to three months, you're going to see visible results in your body. Good luck. So we have the next question. If, if you guys have any questions, um, meanwhile, you can, you can uh, I think we have a chat right here. Can you please explain what is C-section? Okay. Um, so we have two kinds of, uh, baby deliveries that we do. Um, the one is, uh, what we call a normal delivery, uh, which is usually from the vaginal area and, uh, it's it sort of, we, we call it the normal delivery, but, but in C-section you need, uh, due to some complications, the mother cannot deliver it normally. Um, so what we do is it's a kind of surgery, not a kind of surgery but a surgery, um, we, we open up uh, the abdominal area where the baby is and get the baby out. And then after the post-surgery, it usually happens that the mother is, it, it is much more painful post-surgery and usually mothers gain weight after that surgery. So this is what C-section is. So Ms. Mahin, we can move to the next question. Yes, so our second question is, Hi, Dr. Nasheen. I'm 16 and I'm overweight. I am diagnosed with PCOS and diabetes. I'm eating at home cooked food and I take cheat meal once a week. I'm not happy with my results of weight loss, though I go to gym too. What should I diet to get rid of extra weight on me? Neha Shea. Uh, Neha, um, one thing that comes as a gift with PCOS is insulin resistance. So usually what happens that um, if you have PCOS, you automatically or you eventually get diabetes type 2 because of the insulin resistance. So like you said, you're, you're eating home cooked food and you're cheating once a week, with, which is completely fine, but you're not happy with your results is because the insulin resistance or the PCOS itself uh, makes it difficult to lose weight. So um, usually what uh, is suggested in the clinical setup is going gluten-free, but it is not uh, important. I mean, if you're not willing to go gluten-free, uh, what you can do is you can simply um, manage your ca calorie intake. Maybe what your body weight is, you can have your BMR and then simply uh, 200 calories per week from that particular BMR. Um, what you can do is Google Mifflin, uh, Mifflin equation, uh, M-I-F-F-I-L-I-N-S. Uh, so you can, you can get a lot of calculators on Google. Uh, simply write your weight, your height in that, maybe it would ask for your gender or your age. It would calculate your BMR, your body mass, uh, basal metabolic ratio. That is the particular ratio your body burns calories. Your body burns calories. So what you are supposed to do is, for example, let's assume it is 
1900 calories. So what you're going to do is minus 200 calories from that and that becomes 1700 calories a day. You're simply going to take 1700 calories a day for the next two weeks and then gradually decrease it. But what I as a dietitian suggest is don't go towards 1200 calories, maintain it um, somewhere around 1400 to 1500 calories. Don't go down line that it is not healthy. And I would also suggest that um, if you can manage, go to a nutritionist, go to a dietitian. It is very important for a PCOS patient. Um, and since you have diabetes also, you can really get a good health from a dietitian. She's going to get you a good diet plan, a balanced diet plan, which is suitable for you. And you can easily lose your weight. It is not impossible for a PCOS patient to lose weight. It just become um, a little bit difficult because of the insulin resistance. Also, for a diabetic patient, we always recommend to go um, low glycemic. You, you have to have those foods in your diet, which, is, which are low glycemic. Um, for example, when we, when we say low glycemic foods, you can also type this on Google and get a lot of foods that are low glycemic. Some example, a few examples are if you're taking white watermelon, it has a, a high glycemic in, index. Um, but instead, if you're taking a peach, as compared to watermelon, it has a low glycemic index. You can add this in your diet, okay? There are a lot of low glycemic foods that you can take. And there is a there are a lot of variety of charts available for a diabetic patients, uh, which suggest what kind of foods they should be taking in moderation, what kind of foods they, sh they should be avoiding, what kind of foods they can easily adjust in their diet. Um, meanwhile, you, what you can also do is like I um, uh, mentioned for Homera, you can up your fiber intake so that it, it kind of helps you and in, with your satiety levels. Uh, what happens it, uh, is we cannot control our satiety levels. And this is why we generally over even home cooked meals. So the thing with, with weight loss, it is not about home cooked meals only. It is about the, the mentioned number of calories you're intaking every day. So what you need to do is you have to maintain your calorie levels and your activity levels. So I think um, you're not that active. It depends. Uh, if you're sedentary, you, you have another level of uh, another uh, kind of um, calorie intake that, that is suitable for you. So for now, what you need to do is add low glycemic index foods. You have, you, you'll get plenty of it on the internet also. Um, avoid sugary foods, refined foods. It is really bad for a PCOS patient to take all that. Um, do not avoid eggs. I, I, I usually... Um, I don't know what this myth is all about that you cannot take eggs during PCOS, but I would suggest take eggs once a day and preferably bo preferably boiled eggs. And um, one egg a day is completely fine. Try and include vegetables in your diet. It would help you. Um, and with PCOS, try and control your insulin resistance. And for that, I would again recommend you to go to a nutritionist. Activity levels should be brisk walk, brisk walk once a day for at least 45 minutes. I know it's difficult for you to start with 45 minutes. So start with um, 30 minutes a day. You 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 go to the gym also. So you, you've, get, you've got the privilege of um, using a treadmill. So what, you, what you're supposed to do is start with five MPH and then gradually increase that. And this would help you. And um, for the diet, have a balanced diet. Do not do not go gluten-free for now. Um, just try with balanced diet and you're eating once a week, it is completely fine. This is fine. Um, and you, you, you're going to reduce your weight. And also one, one last thing, which is very important is water intake. I've usually uh, witnessed in weight loss patients that do not they, they, they do not really take the particular amount of water that their body needs. So for that, um, if you guys can follow my Instagram, there are a lot of things related to uh, calculating water weight, um, water requirements also. It is the food doctor says on Instagram. Uh, so there, there's this equation for um, calculating your the, the particular amount of water your body needs needs in a daily um, in a daily sort of setup so calculate that water intake and if you cannot calculate that at least aim for 16 glasses a day 16 glasses of water so um 
I would suggest um, take a water bottle and keep it beside you every time you feel hungry. Take the water first, at least drink two glasses of water. And after that, even if you feel hungry again, you're not satisfied after the water uh, intake, then take food. Because usually what happens, we are dehydrated, we feel hungry. We're not really hungry, we are dehydrated. So we feel hungry uh, when we are dehydrated. So what you can do is at least, sorry for the noise, I have a puppy in my room and he's got a new toy and yeah, he's going to make that noise. So um, coming towards the water intake, at least aim for 16 glasses a day and you'll feel better. Take a water bottle, keep it beside you. Whenever you feel hungry, first drink water. Even after drinking the water, if you feel hungry, then go towards satisfying your body, satisfying your, nourishing your body with food, okay? So I think do these things and you will feel better. Yeah, I'm fine. All right, thank you. So we have third question. Okay. I stopped taking keto diet. I felt restricted and weak. To be honest, I cannot carry on with single diet. Is there any diet which does not need much of a fuss and restrictions and is budget friendly. My family eats completely different meals than that of what I take as a diet. Subhana Jamshed Sweet. Okay. Subhana, that, uh, that is really good if you've stopped taking keto diet. Um, keto diets are a fuzz and um, I being a dietitian, I'm really against keto diet. Only if you're an epilepsy patient or you have a medical condition that requires you to take a keto diet, only then go for a keto diet. Um, other ways, keto diet is worse for your body. Do not even try to go for a keto diet. Um, additionally, um, since you've um, stopped taking a keto diet and you, you cannot, and also you cannot carry on with a single diet, there is no diet. I think diets are whatever we see on Instagram or Facebook or um, these, these are, these are all scams. I would say there is no such diet diet thing um, in, in the field of nutrition. You can, you can, if you're a normal person, you can always go for a balanced diet and, and with balanced diet, we mean uh, you should have carbohydrates. You should have proteins. You should have fats in your diet. All these three macro groups are really important and you shouldn't be avoiding any one of them. And additionally, with micros, you should have those micronutrients in your diet as well. So for that, you need to have a balanced diet. So what is a balanced diet? It differs for everybody. Um, for example, um, for someone, there should be seven to eight servings of carbohydrates that are suitable. For someone, there are two servings or three servings or four servings of protein that 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 is required for their body body weight. So it depends. So um, for now, having a balanced diet, you should you should try with going on with not avoiding anything, just uh, eliminating a few things from your diet. And what you should be eliminating is number one, like I always say, avoid um, the refined carbs instead add the whole carbohydrates in your diet. With the refined carbs, we have an example of white flour. Instead of white flour, go for whole wheat uh, flour, whole, whole wheat grains, okay? So adding, adding up on that uh, would um, make you feel satisfied with what you're eating. Also add some fruits and vegetables in your diet, in your daily diet. Um, we see that um, after carbohydrates, the largest amount of uh, nutrients that you need from or the groups that you're taking your diet from is fruits and vegetables. So after your carbohydrates or your um, whole grains, you should aim for having the right fruits and vegetables in your diet. And I really um, think that you should be taking apples. It has a lot of um, micronutrients and a good ample amount of fiber as well. Take apple, take peaches. Um, if you don't want to take banana right now, but that's completely fine. You can you can choose other fruits. Um, like if if you if you've got oranges around, it's good. Take oranges. Um, have melons. It has a good water amount. And with vegetables, take the vegetables that are high in water content, like um, cucumbers. Um, you can you can add cucumbers in your daily diet, and you should have it with every meal that you're having. It has a very low amount of calorie and a very high amount of water content, and which which is which really supports the weight loss. 
Additionally, you can have cabbage uh, with um, at least two meals in your day, with your lunch, with your dinner. Um, you can have um, carrots, you can have cucumber, more of like that. You can, you can add whatever you like from the vegetables group. But I would suggest eat it raw. Uh, prefer raw vegetables instead of cooks. And uh, when you're setting your plate uh, while you're sitting for a meal, uh, try and add half of the plate with vegetables and then the quarter half with uh, your food, whatever you're having that in that particular time. It can be biryani, it can be salad, whatever you're having. But make sure that half of your plate is filled with vegetables. So this, this is going to help you increase your raw vegetable um, intake which is really helpful for weight loss and uh, with recovering your body. And because of the keto diet, you might have missed on a lot of micronutrients as well. So you might feel more hungry than usual. It usually happens with, a, with, with some patients who, are, who were uh, on a keto diet in the past. They feel more hungry and they cannot really um, curb their hunger or control their um, hunger levels. So with it, th this is going to help you. And last one is exactly the same what I said, um, up your water levels. Aim for at least four liters of water in a day. This would really help you um, increase a good level of satiety in a day. And before bedtime, what you can do is you can make a herbal tea. Um, you can take cinnamon, which we, which we call uh, darchini in Urdu. Uh, take cinnamon, uh, take one tablespoon of honey. Um, if, you, if you have raw honey, um, it is really good. If you cannot um, find raw honey, you can, you can take half a tablespoon of gur or brown sugar. Um, and with that, you can add um, black pepper while boiling. And um, the last thing you can add is ginger. Ginger or garlic, whatever. People usually do not have a very good taste bud for garlic. So I prefer ginger. So you can have a, a little bit of ginger, um, some pieces of gin ginger and boil it. Boil it for at least two to three minutes and then strain it and then have it before bedtime. Um, this would really help you um, boost up your metabolism maybe or maybe help you with um, um, losing weight. Yeah, it would help you with your um, maintaining your glucose levels as well. So, yeah. Thank you, Nishi. So, we have another question. Okay. That's, that's the, this is the question I like. I am mother of five and I have no time to plan something extra in a day. My health is not the same now. I feel not happy, especially when I look at myself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Please guide me towards easy steps that I can lead towards healthy and energetic me. Uzma Kashif for me. Ah, I can understand <laughs> what this actually means. Um, you know, um, even uh, in the last two months, even I have felt that when you're busy, when you're really busy, when you're working or you're busy with something, you cannot really plan your meals. And um of course, being a dietitian, I always recommend planning meals ahead, but this is not ideal for everybody. Even it's sometimes it's not even ideal for me to plan a meal. So what you can do is control your portion sizes. This is the last and a very feasible option for many. Um, with portion size, we mean if you're planning to have a salon, maybe um, you have a salon, um, take a teacup, uh, not the mug, a teacup. Uh, and uh, sort of if, if you can have those um, measuring cups, you can you can buy them. Um, it's really good. But if you cannot buy them only, then I'm telling you, you can use a teacup. Uh, take a teacup, um, uh, put your salon in that teacup and have that particular amount of uh, serving size in one sitting for lunch. And if you're having chapati, you can have six inches chapati in one in, in a sitting in one particular serving size. You can take your six inch chapati and you can have your one a cup of salon and you can have as much of uh, vegetables, raw vegetables, like I said, uh, in your plate and you can have them. So this is not going to uh, up your calories level in, in a single sitting of a meal. And you, you, you do not have to plan your meal. You can have anything that you're having. You can have anything uh, that is cooked at your home. Uh, have it, but control your portion sizes. One cup for salad and one cup for chawal. 
both of them them should be one cup and one six inches chapati is one serving and do not exceed two servings in one sitting you can have maximum of two chapatis in one sitting in in in, in, in maybe you're, you're having your lunch do not exceed a two two servings of chapati and this is this is going to help you this is going to control your portion size and also whatever you're having uh, for example maybe you're eating out you're having a burger one trick that we can use is we can share our, our meals with, with the person sitting next to us, maybe our husband, maybe our kids, maybe our friend that we are going out with. You can share your meals. That is going to half or, or quarter half your, your serving in a particular time. Share your meals with your friend. Or maybe you're having a burger. Um, have half a burger in one particular sitting and take away the, the, the leftover and eat it um, maybe in your dinner or maybe um, the next day. Um, but don't just go for a whole burger in one sitting. So you can half uh, your portion size in that particular way as well, which is easier and um, you can enjoy your meals. Um, and one thing that I wanted to add is when you're having sweet, um, the sweet, um, don't, don't go for one particular cup of, cup of any sweet um, serving. Go for half uh, a cup of sweet serving. That is more than enough in one particular sitting. So um, half cup for a sweet serving and one cup for um, rice or salad that you're having. And um, just half your burger or sandwiches that you're having in one particular time, in one particular sitting. This is going to sort of... Um, half your portion size and going to help you achieve your uh, calorie cut and um, you're going to lose your weight gradually. I think, um, Ms. Mahin, are you there? Mm -hmm. Ms. Mahin? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So you have the answer. Um, uh, fine. I cannot can hear me. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm saying, can we go to the next question? Yes. Yes. For sure. Okay. okay, the seed diet. Hi, okay. Roshin. I was in your last session. Yeah. In which you told us about seed diet. I think I messed it up. Could you please tell me again? And with the subject point, anyone else can it. Okay. Uh, so for the seed cycling, I would really recommend the person that, that, that was with PCOS and diabetes. She can also have, uh, she can also do seed cycling. It would be, it would be really, really beneficial for her as well. And I would really recommend her to go for a seed cycling. Um, it would help balance her hormones. Um, so uh, what's with the seed diet is uh, whatever seeds I'm talking about right now, you need them grounded or pisehue, what we call in Urdu. Uh, grounded seeds are preferable because they're easy to digest um, and they're easy to give a, a better effect in your digestive system. So we had four kinds of seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds and sesame seeds. Uh, these four seeds are recommended. And what you're going to do is, um, see, we, we have a follicular phase and we have, um, let's just talk about the follicular phase first. So in the follicular phase, uh, uh, this is particularly from the menstruation to ovulation. And by menstruation to ovulation, we mean that when your periods start till um, the 14 days of your periods. Day one of your periods and then counting off till the 14th day, okay? We know that we have a seven-day cycle. You have to keep taking uh, those particular seeds till your 14, day com 14 days complete. 
Which two particular seeds are recommended? Uh, these are pumpkin seeds and flax seeds. You need to take one tablespoon of pumpkin seeds and one tablespoon of flax seeds daily for 14 days since the day, the day one of your periods. And then after 14 days, we have luteal phase. In luteal phase, particularly from your ovulation to the next menstruation, the day one on your, of your periods, you need to take these two, uh, these two seeds and which are sunflower seeds and sesame seeds. Uh, both of them should be taken one tablespoon daily. If you develop uh, a kind of tolerance to that chicken, you can take two tablespoons daily of each seeds, but do not exceed two tablespoons a day, okay? So we have uh, flax seeds and uh, sunflower seeds and sesame seeds and pumpkin seeds, okay? Pumpkin and flax are one group, okay? We have to take them for 14 days since the day one of our periods. And the next particular day, uh, the 15th day till we start our next periods, we, we need to take um, sunflower seeds and sesame seeds, um, one tablespoon or two tablespoons daily. This would really help you because, because these have a, a lot of omega-3 in these particular seeds and we have um, a lot of other micronutrients which, which are important to balance your hormones basically. What we do with soup, seed cycling is we balance the hormones with natural uh, products or natural seeds available. So you should try this and be patient with the seed cycling. It has gradual effects, but it does have effects. Uh, for some people, it has a really um, quick effect, you could say. Uh, they get uh, their hormones balanced within two to three weeks. But for some people, it, it may be um, one or two months that this could finally show up uh, its effect, its its beneficial effects. So be patient with it. And if you have any confusions, you can also, um, I, I've written my Instagram on the chat. You can also go there and there are a lot of posts related to sea cyclings and a lot of other things. Yeah. Thank you, Virginia. Next question is, my life is traveling on the way to job and <laughs> job work and coming back home. It takes the whole day. I'm exhausted. When I reach home and I just hop to bed. Hop to bed. Okay. I don't know. All right. How do you stay active every day? I tried, but it is not successful so far. Okay. I need to stop outing with myself. Um... And yet, easy way to manage the activities. I kind of like blunders like this. All right. So that's Yera, it's my year 26. <laughs> okay. Um, so basically, her, her, her problem is she, she is a busy. Um, women and she she doesn't get time to stay active every day and she does not like her sedentary life um so see um you're already active uh if if you have a lot of commuting a uh, job if you have a job that requires traveling you're already exhausting your body so what my priority would be um you need to take the ample amount of rest that your body needs after traveling because you're already tired. So I would not uh, really suggest that when you come back, you should you should um, do some really great exercises or maybe a training or maybe turn on YouTube and start dancing in your room. No, you, your body needs rest if your job is exhausting. And um, uh, if you want to stay active, you can also um, utilize your weekends for that. Um, you can, you can, maybe join a gym for the weekends or maybe you can stay active go for a hike if maybe if you're in Islamabad you can go for a hike on weekends or maybe if, even if you don't get time for a hike or maybe going out on weekends what you can do is simply take a walk and that is it walking is highly underrated and it's really effective so um, if you cannot go out just take some do some yoga poses, um, take some deep breaths, which which is going to help you uh, calm your body from a very hectic day. Some deep breaths, like um, we all know how to deep breath, right? Um, we need to inhale 
and stop it for four seconds, one, two, three, four, and then exhale. Do it for at least two minutes and then start your walk. And then when you walk for at least 15 to 20 minutes in your room or maybe in your corridor or maybe in your porch, and just come back and sit down and do the do the deep, deep breath breathing again for like four seconds. Inhale and stop it for like, hold it for like um, four seconds and then exhale for two minutes and that is it. You already have a hectic hectic job. You you do not really go. You do not. I do not really recommend um, resting, exercising over resting. So take ample amount of rest, and then if you want to just do some exercises and be active, just walk. That is it. Thank you, Rishi. All right. So the next question is. Hi, Dr. Mojeen. I have lost 16 kgs in a year, but my hairs are falling so much and my hair is super thin and weak now. What medicines should I take or would be the best? What should I do? Shamim Mukhtar 36. Yeah, um, the, the, the worst um, side effect of losing a lot of weight is hair fall. This this is really common and this, this goes really bad. Uh, if you're not taking a really good diet, a really balanced diet, an ideal diet, you're going to lose your hair. Yeah, and it, it, it actually turns to alopecia in some patients as well. So what you need to take care of is your micronutrients and omega-3. Uh, with omega-3, I would suggest start taking flex seeds. Um, for like supplements, I, I do not just jump into supplements, but if you cannot take these from your diet, you should take supplements like biotin, omega-3. There are a lot of supplements available. Um, there are a lot of um, pharmaceutical companies that are selling it. Um, and I, I cannot just go for one and supporting them, but um, go for the supplements um, that are better reviewed. And um, with... Um, Omega-3, I would suggest if you're taking it from food, it is the best. And one thing that I wanted to add about supplements that I forgot is that it highly depends what the bioavailability of a supplement is. Many supplements claim that they are highly bioavailable, but they are just plain um, waste of money. So instead of taking those supplements, which are not even bioavailable in your digestive system, which are not going to give that effect, you should instead try and get it from food, which are highly bioavailable as compared to the supplements. Coming again, um, flax seeds that we just talked about, grounded flax seeds have a lot of omega-3, which is helpful for your hair and your skin. If you have um, a skin that is aging, um, maybe you're getting a, a little fine lines or wrinkles on your skin. Omega-3 really helps with uh, rejuvenating your skin. Biotin really helps with it. So for omega-3, you can have fish in your diet, flex seeds in your diet, which has a lot of omega-3. Uh, you can add olive oil in your diet, which is really going to help you with your, with your hair fall as well. Um, uh, fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables would give you a boost of micronutrients. So aim for at least five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. At least five fruits a day would really help you achieve that micronutrient level. Um, additionally, what you can add, which is really easy, are eggs. At least if you're, if you're not a cholesterol patient and you do not have any uh, complications in your body, aim for at least two boiled eggs a day. Um, it would give you the, the, the protein, the micronutrients that are going to make your hair healthy. And uh, with protein, go for lean, lean proteins like um, fish, like chicken. You can have lean proteins. If you're having meat, just make sure that uh, the fat on the meat is uh, taken off and you can have the meat also. Um, don't go for protein powders for now. Uh, it is not recommended. Um, if you want to go for a multivitamin, um, there's a multivitamin called Hair Aid. Um, take it for three months um, until it shows some effects. Um, but again, I would not suggest going for a multivitamin before you go for food sources. At least try the food sources for three months. You would change. I would, I would really claim that you would see the changes if you um, follow it religiously. And if you don't, if you cannot manage, then go for a multivitamin that I just suggested. 
or maybe you could also see a dietitian or a nutrition nutritionist for a proper balanced meal plan. But a few simple ways are adding eggs, adding lean protein in your diet, adding the good fats like omega-3 in your diet um, from the sources like flax seeds, olive oil. Um, walnuts are a really good source of polyunsaturated fats. So you can add these particular things. Yogurt would really help. And you, you could see the changes in a few months. Yeah. All right, Rishi, thank you for your inputs to all this query. Uh, Rishi, what do you personally advise uh, all of these ladies? These, these were their queries, like what would you advise them as a whole? Um, I've been lately seeing a lot of um, body dysmorphia around. See, I'm a dietitian and I would really recommend people to be healthy, to be on a healthy weight. But it does not mean that you undermine your beauty, your originality from the sources we see on social media. So you see, I've seen a lot of girls coming to me and telling me they're idealistic supermodels and that particular kind of body. Um, I would really suggest my youth to just be themselves. Everybody has a different shape. Everybody is supposed to be different. It's supposed to be um, acting different. So you do not have to have that particular role model body, which is not even a role model body. Um, so you should really focus on your own health, on your particular body shape, on achieving your maximum health in that particular body that you have, that you own right now. You cannot be like someone else and someone else cannot be like you. Everybody have their um, plus points and every every particular body has their requirements that, that are needed for that particular body, the cons that we have. We need to fix them. Just don't go for the things that you see on social media. And also what I highly suggest is please, please scrutinize what you're watching on social media. Even if that particular person is a nutritionist or a dietitian, maybe they're faking. Maybe they're not even a dietitian. Just look into their credentials. Just look if they're even uh, obliged or licensed to make those diet, diet plans, to make those claims, this is very important. People are selling things on social media which are not even not even true. So uh, don't go for the supplements that, that are biased on social media. They are, they are PR products and they do it for PR, for, 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 for the kind of things they are getting. This is true. I am also a social media influencer. And if I, I am saying that, it has a lot of meaning. So um, focus, instead of going for those scams, focus on getting um, an appointment with a dietitian. If you're, if you're this um, crazy about uh, improving your health, focus on getting an, an, an appointment with a registered dietitian, which who would help you um, with your body issues, with your um, body ideals, okay? And trust me, you all are beautiful in a different way. We all are different and we are supposed to be different and we need to accept ourselves like that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Rishi. Uh, thank you for your time. And from the audience, anybody has some comments or any questions? If not, we would like to the session. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming in and listening to me. And if you have any questions, you can also reach me on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on uh, TikTok, uh, except Facebook. I'm on all social media platforms. Yeah. So you can reach me out there. And it is who Dr. Says for every platform. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Moshi. Thank you so um, much. Thank you for another session. Thank you. Thank Hello. you. Uh, can I have a question? Um, yes. I'm, I'm Aisha Amin and I am uh, 26 years old. I have diabetes. Uh, I use um, insulin uh, two times in a day, uh, day and night, and also always use uh, healthy food, but I can control my weight. And uh, I always uh, lost my weight and I don't know what's the reason or um, how to control it. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, so with insulin, um, that, that's a really good question, first of all. With insulin, uh, there is an amount of insulin and an amount of carbohydrate that, that is allowed in your diet. For example, if you're taking one unit of insulin, uh, you, you're only allowed to take 15 grams of carbohydrate with that. So you need to have a balanced diet plan. Uh, if your doctor haven't suggested that, go to a dietitian. She would have that particular, with your insulin amount that you're taking two times a day, it is important for you to manage your carbohydrate intake. Um, except that you cannot lose weight or you cannot improve your insulin levels, okay? So I what I would strongly suggest you is um, go to a dietitian or maybe ask a dietitian to calculate your insulin levels with your carbohydrate levels that are allowed uh, to you in a particular time of that uh, that phase, that particular phase that your insulin is acting, it is important for you to calculate your carbohydrate intake, okay? So I would strongly suggest that um, reach out to a dietitian or a nutritionist to get you a really good plan uh, according to your um, uh, the, the kind of dose you're taking, okay? Thank you, mom, so much. I think we should wait for one minute. Okay. All right. Inara has a feedback. This, no matter what I do, I don't enjoy it. Oh, <laughs> uh, Miss Inara. Uh, I've I've known uh, Inara personally for a very long time, so I, that is why I was uh, making that face. Um, so Inara. Um, uh, there are a lot of things with the weight loss process. It's it's not just what you're eating. It's not just what you're doing. So um, like I said, I have uh, suggested an ample amount of tips in the, this particular session. At least, at least um, follow four of them. Indulge four of them. And whenever I suggest a few tips, you need to make sure that you cannot follow all of them. It is not uh, ideal to follow all of them in a single sitting. What you need to do is at least add two of them and then gradually improve with three tips and then four tips. You, you need to gradually um, make your diet better. This is what we focus on. So what you can do is at least follow four tips from this whole session, include it in your diet, see the progress in one month and then you can come to me as well. You can reach me out on Instagram and we can talk about your progress. Yeah. Okay.